Welcome into Argo Sports Weekly. We've got another great show for you this week. We start things off in the field house here at the University of West Florida with Coach Jeff Burkhammer and the UWF men's basketball team. Fresh off coming back home and grabbing a couple wins this week. I know it felt good to be back in the field house. Big games for us, Will. They, uh, they were really big games. Had to get two home games, played well. Really both nights, defended well and found another way to win. Kind of different ways of doing it, and these are games that you needed to have. We talked with you last week. I know it was a disappointing trip up to Alabama, but you get back home, you know you these are victories that at this part of the year in the GSC schedule you have to have. West Georgia comes in on a Thursday, and it, it's kind of that traditional game with the Wolves. Well, they're a good team. They're, they're a team that's probably better than their record indicates. They've got a couple outstanding players. Uh, they've got guys that can score the ball, and we really did a good job guarding them. And then uh, opening the game up, and then held on a little bit late in the game. But a good win for us at home, a game that gives us a little bit of separation. That game on the Thursday night was a game you were missing a couple of players, uh, body-wise a little bit yeah. short, and you needed some guys to step up and come off the bench and give you something. I thought you really got that from Brett Carter Jr. and Arafat Shabu. Well, Arafat was tremendous. He, uh, he had 13 rebounds, really played well. We were playing without Tariq McKelvin and Lawrence Williams. So uh, losing two of our probably top six or seven guys uh, and, and getting those guys to come in and play that well and, and really have pretty good control of the game throughout was great. John Brown, Cameron Cox, I thought, especially down the stretch, really pushed you as they do, kind of night in and night out. You had to have them and, and really had that run right at the end of the last two minutes, last minute of the game. You scored the final six and pull out the victory. Well, those two guys have been terrific all year. They've been solid. They've been consistent with what they're, they've done on the court. Uh, two guys that are veteran players that we've we feel like that's where the ball is going to be probably late in the game, and they've been able to come through. Saturday, you got shorter in the building, uh, and, and they're a team that, you know, despite their record, they can put the ball in the basket. They got one of the better players in the league, and it turned out to be a weird game uh, for him. You got him out of the game yeah. pretty quick with fouling out, but you guys needed maybe somebody to step up and provide some offense, give Cam and John a little bit of a break. Brett was able to do that, comes in, and, and when he's hot, boy, it looks good coming out of the hand. <laughs> he did shoot the ball really well. We, we, uh, we got him a look right when he came in, first uh, possession of the game, and he hits it, and uh, he really felt good after that, shot the ball well, got us a lead. Uh, but you're right, we were playing against one of the best players in the league. Corey Wilson, I think, is a terrific player, and we attacked him a little bit defensively, made him have to guard, and we were able to give him some foul trouble. And, uh, getting him out of the game, I think, helped us some. But uh, Brett coming into the game was a big, big uh, plus for us in this in this one. Brett hit five threes in the game. There was a stretch, you know, and that happens sometimes where a guy just a couple trips down the floor. I think he he heat checked himself one time <laughs> right behind us here, just just to make sure, you know, yeah. that everything wasn't going to fall for him. But then John Brown and Cam, and you kind of you know doing what they do. And I thought Cameron did a great job of controlling tempo at times. This is a game where you're up 18 at one point, I think, and, and then kind of able to, to keep that going late. They closed it down at one point, but he did a nice job of getting you where you needed to be. Well, and we talk about tempo and making sure we're playing at the pace we want to play at. This was a game we actually wanted to force tempo a little bit more. They were down on number some coming off a, a game with Valdosta who makes you play up and down the floor. So we wanted to try to get into them a little bit more so maybe late in the second half they'd wear down and really the last 10 minutes I think they did wear down a little bit and that's where we were able to open the game back up. What else uh, jumped out and stood out from the shorter game? You obviously you had Tariq back and you were telling me before we started the show here that you know want to make sure they didn't play too many minutes as he's kind of making getting him healthy and getting right but he was able to come in look like he had his bounce and, and boy that kid's athletic. He's an athletic kid and, and we want to make sure he's well but uh, we didn't play him too many minutes we want to make sure he's able to go this week on the road uh, hopefully get Lawrence Williams back also. Two guys that you know we've been fortunate all year not to have many ankle injuries. We get two in one week. Uh, so it'd be good to have both those guys back. But you know, we had a lot of different guys uh, last week play well. Offensively, we were better in both games. We shot higher percentages than we've been shooting. We got to the foul line, made free throws. Uh, so I think uh, overall a really good week for us to get to two and zero, and it's really where we needed to be. You look up and we're midway through February now and there's not that much more left on the schedule. Here you guys are nine and seven in GSC play sitting where you need to be, I think, you know, to try to get into that conference tournament. Go on the road. This is a tough road trip. This is out to Delta on a Thursday night, Mississippi College up in the Jackson area on Saturday. You got to be focused. Well, these are two games that you know, we took care of at home, and we got to find a way now to, to go on the road and play well. Uh, we know that uh, these are teams that we can play with. Hopefully we'll play uh, really well on the road, knowing that we also have two buys left. Uh, we only have four games. Some other people have five or six games left. So important for us to play well against these two with uh, two home games to finish up. Ceiling for this team, you guys get to the tournament. I mean, you've shown you can play with anybody and be dangerous. When this team is clicking, can they get it done? Well, we, you know, we've beaten Huntsville. We've beaten West Alabama. We've beaten Union, three of the top five teams in the league. Uh, so we, we've been able to play with everybody. And 
uh, on, a, on any night, I think we're as good as anybody in the league, and on some nights we're not as good as anybody in the league. Uh, so we've been kind of all over the place, but I think we are playing better, and hopefully we're playing better at the right time. All about peaking at the right time Peak before right that time. March Madness sets in. Coach, thank you. Good luck this week on the road again. Thursday night, Delta State. Saturday, Mississippi College. They'll be back here in the field house on the 22nd with Montevallo around the corner. Coming up next, we'll check in with Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton and the women's basketball team here at the University of West Florida right here on Argo Sports Weekly. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. Time to turn our attention now to women's basketball. Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton joins us now. Coach, coming off uh, two home games. It's always nice to be back home, kind of in the friendly confi confines. And Thursday, Friday is usually the split. You guys had West Georgia in on a Thursday night. A little bit of a, of a tough one as you're trying to incorporate some new elements into the team, you know, figure out do we have enough practice time to get some of these new players right. involved. And, and I know West Georgia is a good basketball team as well. Yeah come up a little bit short on that end, but a great game from Faith Franklin. In fact, sets a new career high for her. Yeah, Faith is really coming on strong here the latter part of her senior season. And that's what seniors do. You know, they really up their game and, and play well uh, late in their season. So uh, proud of her and the effort, the leadership she's showing. Uh, but you mentioned the two new kids, you know, the, the two volleyball girls we added late, uh, only been a part of the program for a couple of weeks. Uh, both got into the game and got to play against West Georgia. So that was a, a, a lifting point for us and a good night for them. I know it was kind of cool because you actually had, you know, the volleyball program was up oh, in the yeah, stands yeah. and they were just just ready to, to kind of explode when yeah, they got into the yeah. game, even for a minute late, kind of that thing. That's kind of cool, though. It is, and but we needed them. You know, we were at a point in the game where West Georgia plays a very uh, fast, up-tempo game, and we had a couple of kids that were really spent, and uh, there were no other subs on our bench other than our volleyball kids. And so, you know, we throw them in to give a couple of our more uh, experienced players a break, and it did. It gave them a good break, and we were able to kind of keep pushing in the game. Faith wasn't the only one that had a good game against West Georgia. Daniel Norquist, again, 10.16 rebounds that double double thing I mean we thought it you know last year with Tony it was That's Tony right. Brewer it was kind of like wow this is something special yeah. you're seeing it again and, and that really I, we may take it for granted it, it is not easy no. to do no well and at this point in the season everybody is gearing for her they know that she is the double double you know player on our team she is our leading scorer so she's getting the toughest assignments from the other squad she's going against kids that are more athletic than she is they maybe play a different position than she does uh, but she's still able to contribute night in and night out. Now she's on the brink of beating Tony's record for the most double doubles in a season. So uh, maybe this week she can get that. She had the one Thursday. Saturday, you guys turn around, you bring Shorter in. It is National Women in Sports yeah. Day. It is play for K Day. Good crowd again on hand for that game. And I, I thought it was, you know, really cool again in the fact that you got to see some outstanding performances. Rachel McCree didn't play great on Thursday night, and, and I'm thinking back to the, the Pistons. You, you'll remember yeah, this, yeah. you know, the, the Pistons teams that won titles. Vinny, the microwave Johnson, That's was right. a player that came off the bench and sometimes started, but he could put points on the board in a hurry. Yeah. Rachel McCree did that for you, especially in a first half run where she just caught fire. Yes, and you know, we've been waiting for that performance from Rachel. We know that's what she can bring to the table. But man, when, it, when, when she's hot, she's hot. And uh, we were 
encouraging her teammates, let's, let's make sure we find her. Let's make sure you have an eye on her, especially in transition when she lets loose, uh, get that ball to her in a manner where she can just catch and shoot. And man, she had a great night. You touched on the volleyball and we just have to touch on it because Taylor Van Ekren, who is an all conference, all GSC setter for coach Melissa Walter in the volleyball program out of Chicago, wearing number 23, yeah, she right. gets in the game, knocks down her first shot, yeah. doesn't hesitate, comes, comes across the key, catches one and puts it up, but then turns around goes full court, a chase down block. Your bench went crazy. Todd Steelman yes. was losing his mind, but it was great to see kind of kind of a lift for everyone, including everyone on the court, everyone on the bench, the coaching staff, the whole deal. Oh yeah, well, and and what a great moment for Taylor. You know, I mean, this is a this is a player who stepped in and goes, hey, you know, maybe I can step in and help you on practice and whatever. And I said, wait. Let's let's let, practice is one thing, but if we can try to use you in a game and be productive, that'd be great. And man, she got in there, you know, showed no fear, taking good open shots, hustling her way. I mean, it's it, it's been it's been great. And um, Taylor and Zoe from volleyball have really uh, brought a positive, uplifting kind of attitude to our team. To a season what what's it's been really hard this season. It's been hard to keep the team's spirit up and keep them focused on the next opportunity in the next game. And those two have come in and uh, and really brought a uh, more of a laid back, positive approach, and it's been fun. Finish strong, keep yeah. some momentum going into next year. Coach, yeah. good luck to you guys this week. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll check in with softball and baseball as they've got their seasons open and underway right here on Argo Sports Weekly. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. We jumped out of doors, a little bit, little bit gray out here today. Coach Mike Jeffcoat, UWF baseball team is here with us. Last week we're standing here, it's like 70 degrees and sunny, but yeah. you know, wait around in Florida for a little while and the weather will switch on you. You guys were back home here at the Spoon to open up the home schedule. Had Rollins College in, took two or three, won the series, not a bad weekend. Yeah, good weekend, especially home opener, especially coming off the series, tough salt loss down at Florida Southern. You know, we talked to the team. We play about, you know, fortunate to get to get about 11 games in against Sunshine State Conference teams. And, you know, that plays a big role in getting regional at large bids. And um, obviously didn't fare well at Florida Southern. Challenged them about this weekend, cleaning up the defense. Uh, pitching was great and uh, obviously came out with a series win yesterday. I was going to say, that jumped out at me looking at the scores and kind of digging through the box scores a little. Your three starters in the three games got seven from each of them. Yeah, and um, you know, we need that because right now we don't have a lot of depth in the bullpen. Got some guys coming back, but uh, you know, going on the pitch count, we were getting them right at 100. That, that's good. We, we'd we normally this early in the season like to get them a little under that, but uh, they stayed pretty efficient. Didn't have any uh, hard logging innings there for Keating on Friday. and. Floyd uh, yesterday, and certainly Hunter Lucas in the tough loss on su uh, Saturday. You know, Eric Keating uh, pitched well, and then you got some offense that first game. You went eight to two in Friday in the home opener, and and the bats kind of jump on it. What who stood out for you in that game? Well, the you know the Friday night game, um, you know we had a lot of energy. They had a good pitcher on the mound, but uh, again Keating matched him, and uh, you know it was I think an hour, two hour and ten minute game, whatever it was, went by pretty quick. Both teams played good defense, but uh, you know we had some big hits, and you know got an early lead, and were able to hold on to it, and. Obviously, anytime you can shut a team out, that's a big plus. Um, so, yeah, it was a good opening night victory to this going in the series. Cullen O'Shea, three for four in that one. As hot as the bats were on Friday, they got cooled off on Saturday. You ran into a, a big kid on the mound, and you said you've seen him before. Yeah, he was a buzzsaw. I think he hadn't had a whole lot of starts uh, at Rollins, but he's beat us twice, and he should, you know, if he stays healthy, he should be a top 10 round pick, 6'6", 250, throwing in the 
mid 90s and commandable breaking ball. So, you know, tough on any team when a guy's like that. He only went six or so, but they had a good bullpen uh, that kept us at bay. And we hit a lot of hard balls right at him. Their shortstop had a great day, uh, saved him on a lot of plays. And, uh, you know, that's a baseball game. You can handle that type of loss. Hunter Lucas kept his team in it, though, with his pitching. Absolutely. And, and that was the whole thing. And, you know, we talked about situational hitting. And, you know, we missed some opportunities yesterday. Even though we won eight to two, we could open that thing up. And we had only two or three opportunities, runners at third, less than two outs on Saturday and couldn't get the ball in play. A lot of credit to that pitcher. Tough to do on a guy like that, but had opportunities to get back in that game. Just didn't do it. Yesterday overcame it, had the big second inning, uh, and, and then tacked on late. Dan Floyd, you know, you're counting on him. He's your Sunday guy, and he comes out and, and pitches the way I know you want him to pitch. And you mentioned gets a little offensive support, but he goes out there and does what you need to do. You have to, you know, shut out in that game, kind of to bounce back. And really, is it closing out series, being able to win that bounce, that rubber game if you need to, or finish it off if it's a sweep? Yeah, and it's uh, the rotation's kind of moved around a little bit out of necessity, but. You know, Daniel Floyd's a mature young man. He just got married this past summer. I know that the team respect him. He's, he's kind of like the team captain, even though we don't name team captains. Uh, and we know he's going to give our team a chance. He, he's always prepared. We know he's going. we can have faith in him and trust in him that he's going to be ready to go. He actually was under the weather like a lot of the guys have been with the flu. Uh, but he came out, and, and that was his most dominant start in a while. And uh, commanding the fastball, I think he said in the article, uh, commanding all four pitches. And uh, team sense that. And and uh, they knew if we could get some runs, we'd be all right. Back on the road again this week, and Gulf South Conference play starts. You got to go up to Montevallo, and you were telling me before we started here, you never know in February what the weather is going to bring, especially as you head north. Yeah, we got rain all week, but they've got a window on Friday, Saturday, but the high is only about 45. It's going to be a cold one. But again, we talk about the factors of learning to win on the road and being in an unfamiliar ballpark. Weather can't be a factor. Umpires can't be a factor. We got to go figure out, figure it out, and get it done. What, what do you uh, kind of take away from this weekend? Obviously, there was a lot to work on when you came back from the, the season opener. Is it just trying to get everything even keel now? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not the talent. It's not, it, you know, a lot of it was some miscommunication defensively, but it was mindset um, and getting their minds right on what our purpose, you know, having more of a purpose-driven mindset of what we're trying to accomplish and where you are in the lineup and what your abilities are. And we don't need everybody trying to hit home runs or doubles and be an impact guys, even though we want to be impact. We just, you know, we got to be pieces of the puzzle. Uh, um, and that's hard to do sometimes. Every kid wants to do well and all that, and, and we understand that. We're just trying to get them in the middle. And uh, I, I guess they got the message, you know, and, and we just saw a lot more synergy, saw a lot more purpose yesterday. Started The coaches started talking about seeing an identity on this team yesterday, and that's key, and that's what we've been looking for. Hope to see more of that this week. Again, on the road at Montevallo, three games set up there. GoArgos.com, always the place to be to check your scores with that. Coach, appreciate it. Coming Thank up next you. here on the show, we'll check in with Coach Ashton McLean in UWF softball. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Welcome back in here to Argo Sports Weekly. We've jumped from the spoon over to the fort. Coach Ashley McLean is with us now to talk some UWF softball. You guys had a busy weekend. We did. Right down in Melbourne. How, how many games did we squeeze in? Five. Five games, <laughs> four and one, which is not bad. And again, seeing some of the, the competition, some of the better teams around that you saw over in Gulf Shores. And mm -hmm. how is that playing some teams this early multiple times? Um, I think it's really great for us. It sees where um, we are and we get to see other teams, at least our coaching staff and I let our girls watch some teams too just to see what kind of competition was out there. But there was teams from all over the United States there so it was fun to see the competition in the Division II level. 
What stood out for you from this tournament down in Melbourne? I mean, obviously to win four games is great, but were there particular games, particular stretches that, that kind of jumped up for you as a coach? Um, I think what stood out the most is our heart and energy. You know, we went into extra innings with um, a couple teams down there, and you you just saw that fight from the girls, and that's what you want to see early on to see what this team's all about and what they can do. So that was a pretty exciting thing that we got to see. You, uh, Teela Howard, we've, we've talked with her on the show many times, off to a good start this season, hitting above 500. She really, at the front, helped set the table. I mean, you got you got, you got good bats through the lineup, and you just got to get them going, right? Uh, but Teela's kind of a difference maker. She is. She's a huge difference maker, and we have that conversation, and it's open about it. And um, her saying this year is just keep it simple, you know, and that's something that she's trying to do. She knows she's a big out for other teams, so she goes in there, and she's just really trying to do her job of getting on base to, help us uh, score that inning. Kelsey Sweat, Grace Gilbert, both, you know, fantastic seasons last year and you run all the way to the College World Series. So you've got those two experienced pitchers back. For them, what are they trying to do early in the season? Is it just trying to get dialed in and kind of get back to where they were? I think Gracie Gilbert, I mean, she's hot right now on the mound. She's kept us in a lot of big ball games for us. Kelsey Sweat's going to come around, you know, she's uh, she didn't have her best weekend, but I know she's going to uh, have it. So she's a very talented pitcher. And then we had our freshman come in in a big, big game for us. And, you know, it showed a lot what she had. So I'm really excited to see what she's going to bring this entire year. And you, you were telling me before we started, uh, those weekends are long weekends. You're playing early. You're playing late. you got to get it out of the hotel early before the game uh, on Sunday. Now, though, we get into the conference schedule. You guys are going up to Montevallo for for three games coming up here this week. I've dodged some weather, as we talked about with baseball a little bit, you know, making sure that mm -hmm. it's not too cold and too wet and all that kind of stuff. But the conference is always important, and you know everybody's looking to, to get you. I mean, they are, but I think everyone in our conference is tough. I've seen a lot of conference teams already this year, and I don't think there's just one team that's standing out that's dominating. You know, everyone's good, and everyone's going to hold their own. So I'm excited to get ready for conference and, you know, get after it, and I think our girls are as well. Montevallo coming up here this week to start GSC play. Coming up next here on the show, it is time to vlog, and we'll check in with tennis and golf on Argo Sports Weekly. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. Each week we like to check in with our vlog crew. This week, Maya and Megan Grace hit the road with basketball for a trip up to Livingston, Alabama and spent some time with baseball tailgating. Hello. Hello. Hey, Megan Grace, where are you? We're doing the intro of the vlog. Oh, I'm just hanging out at the field house. Where are you? I'm in the second row, middle bleachers. Oh. I'm in row F. Oh, I oh. see you. Maya. Hey, sorry, I'll come home. So, Megan Grace, what are we doing this week? If you don't remember, we traveled to West Alabama we for the did. women's and men's basketball game. And then we hung out uh, at the baseball home opener tailgate. We yeah. did. That yeah. was pretty cool. Let's get swinging. Hey Argos, I'm here with Laura from Alpha Chi Omega, and today we're hanging out at the baseball tailgate for the home opener. Laura, how are you feeling about the baseball season this year? I'm actually feeling really good, but I was thinking we could switch it up today, and I would like to interview you, Megan Grace Gibson. I prepared a few questions for you. Which baseball inning is your favorite? Probably the fourth. What would be your walk-up song? Oh, that's a good one. Maybe like Crazy Frog by Axel F. Crazy Frog, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, what is your favorite stage of the cell cycle? Mitosis? How many baseball games have you won personally? Personally, I'd like to say I like to keep it humble. I don't really like to tell people a lot, but I've won around 2,000. Thank you. Thank you for interviewing. <laughs>
Okay, so we're here at the baseball tailgate and the Central Credit Union of Florida just gave me a cool water bag that I can wear on my jacket. I can just take the lid off. Maybe not. <laughs> I still can't take it off. In theory, I'd be able to take off the lid and drink from it. So that way, during the game, I can stay right in my seat. My eyes don't even have to leave the field. Go Argos. Go Central Credit Union of Florida. All right, Argos, you heard it here first. The winners of the baseball home opener tailgate is Alpha Chi Omega, Woo. and they have won a $100 Publix <laughs> gift card. Shout out to Josie for putting this together. <laughs> minutes left so we're doing pretty good on time yeah you know we're gonna try to get there as early as we can maybe have a pep talk with the girls because honestly what will inspire them more than me and Maya what did we just do Maya we just left cookout in Meridian and it was my first time it was pretty good I think next time you should get a burger oh yeah I'll I think that's that the way to go time. I got the chicken strips this time so we are back on route to West Alabama so we'll see you there go Argos Let's just take a moment to say we love how positive Coach Yelts is. We do. Just look at him. That's my women's basketball coach. So Faith, you're the only senior this year. How are you feeling about senior night coming up? Um, I'm excited. Um, I can't believe that I've been here for four years, been playing basketball. It kind of did go by kind of fast because I, I remember my freshman year when I came in August 1st with the team. We went to Dominican that year and then now I'm it's not... The Dominican Republic? Mm -hmm. We went to the Dominican Republic my freshman year. So what do you want to do after? I know you're really in, big into music. Mm -hmm. I plan on uh, working in the studio as an audio engineer. I'm also going to be at UWF uh, in the master's program, exercise okay. science, and um, hoping to get into strength and conditioning as well. A lot of coaches impacted my life and I want to be able to do that as well. So that's something I'm interested in, but music is really my big thing. I really want that to work because that's my passion. Looking back on all four of your years here at UWF, what's your favorite memory? Going to the Elite Eight my freshman year, that's the year like we started August 1st and ended like the end of March. Like it was like, how many months is that? Seven months of pure like hard work. That, that season was awesome. I learned a lot. Played with a lot of awesome players. I mean, I played with awesome players all four years here, but like that year was just different because I was able to go out the country for the first time. I was able to, you know, go to the Elite Eight, which is like, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Like they treated us like, you know. Royalty. Yeah, they did. And so that was pretty, that was pretty dope. Okay, well this is Faith Franklin, friend of the vlog. Everybody get ready for Faith Appreciation Day. What day is senior night? February 27th, 5.30 p.m. at UWF Fieldhouse. We'll be there and you should be there too. Thanks right. for being here, Faith. Thank you. Well, that road trip was fun. The tailgate was fun. I think that's about it for this week. As always, go, go Argos. Argos. Basketball, baseball, softball all going, and those aren't the only ones. Tennis and golf also in action. The tennis team, both men and women, up in Georgia, in the Valdosta area, with a couple matches to get their season started. And then women's golf at the World Golf Invitational down in St. Augustine just started playing early in the week with their first tournament. The men are involved in the Matlock Collegiate Classic in Lakeland. We'll update you on the results from those tournaments next week. And we'll see you next week right here on Argo Sports Weekly. But always go to GoArgos.com for the latest on results, upcoming schedules, and the features that you see right here on the show. And we'll meet you right here next week.